Bhatia, professor of cardiology at Ain Shams University. Hello, doctor. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. As a, as a co-chairman, uh, uh, what's new in cardiac this year? Well, there's a, a lot of new updates regarding the uh, diseases, pathogenesis, as well as the uh, treatments. Uh, and we were concentrating also uh, this year on the uh, treatments of difficult to treat dyslipidemias, including uh, awareness for the patients who have familial hypercholesterolemia, which is a common, relatively common uh, disease that is under-recognized in Egypt. Because a lot of doctors think that it's rare while it's not really rare. Mm. We see it uh, relatively uh, common, and you, when you say uh, 2 to 3 percent, that's not rare. Yes, yes. And uh, the problem is it runs in families. It runs in families, brothers, fathers, the uncles, the cousins. And the patient who comes with a heart attack or a stroke and is diagnosed as familial hypercholesterolemia, which is FH in short, he does not warn his relatives or his siblings. So they keep coming. They keep coming with heart attacks. He himself gets recurrent events mm. and he's wondering why I'm taking care of my diet I'm taking the regular medications not the proper medication for yes. familial hypercalcemia and I keep getting a second heart attack a third heart attack a stroke what am I doing wrong mm. so it's not his problem actually it's been shown that a lot of these have genetic abnormalities in what is known as LDL receptors and PCSK9 receptors, which is genetic. And you can find it by genetic typing, which is not widely available in Egypt. So you can find it clinically. You don't need to do genetic typing. It's mm -hmm. very costly. Mm -hmm. You can find it in those that have an LDL more than 180 milligram per deciliter and have a family member who had a heart attack at a young age, meaning if it's a male below 55 years of age, if it's a female below 65 years of age, and you'll find it's running in his family. So such a patient has to be treated aggressively with what we call high-intensity statins, as well as combination with other drugs that are non-statins like ezetimibe. And if he is lucky, he will respond, because such a patient, you need to reduce his LDL by 50%. If it doesn't, then now we have the new drugs which are called PCSK9 inhibitors which act actually on the receptors on the liver mm -hmm. and they help to get rid of the LDL cholesterol. So we have this drugs and it's taken once every two weeks by subcutaneous injection. The patient gives it to himself mm -hmm. with special pen and it's a dramatic reduction LDL 60% and the trials internationally one of them was just published last March 2018, which showed that these high-risk patients benefit. And there is no safety concern. There is no risk if you lower your LDL even to below 30 mg per deciliter. So this is a message for such a patient. What we are telling our patients is they have to tell their siblings, they have to tell their cousins if they know from which side paternal or maternal side, they have the genes, they have to start taking treatment even as early as 10 years of age, if they have their children, so that when they reach 30s, 40s, they don't develop premature yes. coronary artery disease. So this is very important. Awareness is not there. And uh, even those who know that they have problem, they take the wrong dose of the wrong medication. So it doesn't uh, translate into benefit and they keep getting the recurrent events. Another thing new in the uh, meeting is we are talking about what's called residual atherosclerotic risk because previously we used to always concentrate like I was just talking about LDL only. So what now that we have these very strong drugs and we lower the LDL still some patients keep coming again with heart attacks. So the story is not only, LDL is an important, but it's not alone. So there are other factors that we are starting to pay attention to, like inflammatory residual risk. You have an inflammatory residual risk, which is easily 
diagnosed by a simple blood test called high sensitivity C-reactive protein. <laughs> and if you find somebody who has that reactive protein above two milligram per deciliter, this person has a high risk for getting atherosclerosis, even if you lower his LDL significantly and you still leave this inflammation, so you have to treat him. There is a new study that was also announced. It was announced in August 2017 and updated in 2018 using one of the new drugs. It's quite expensive, not available, but it documented that when you lower this inflammatory marker, you lower the incidence of atherosclerotic disease by the same degree such as lowering LDL, which is average 18 to 20 percent. And they are trying in trials that will be published at the end of this year, cheaper drugs that we can use by orally, by mouth, not by injections. Cheap drugs like, for example, something called colchicine, which is used for hyperuricemia gout. So they are under trial and it will be published by the end of the year. So we can give it to patients with residual inflammatory risk. This is two. There's another residual risk for patients who have what is known as hypertriglyceridemia, above 200 milligram per deciliter, combined with low HDL, less than 40 milligram per deciliter. This is another entity. Even if you lower their LDL, you lower their inflammatory risk, but you leave this, they get heart attacks. So, and there are trials coming out with special agents for hypertriglyceridemia new fibrates and new drugs coming out, especially medical, you know, we are in Egypt, we're fond of the omega, omega fatty acids, mm. but there are med medical grade omega fatty acids, not the ones over the counter, and they are being studied. And all this is studied after you lower the LDL, after you lower the inflammation, and then you give these drugs and see if it gives an additional benefit. We're going to find out, not yet published, the last residual risk marker is what's known lipoprotein little a, which is something a little bit similar to LDL, but it's separate and causes atherosclerosis, particularly in young age, young age group. And you have to find out by analyzing the blood for lipoprotein little a. And there are special drugs also in trial to lower it. So these four markers, if you succeed in lowering them, you're going to reduce markedly atherosclerosis, markedly recurrent events. So this is very interesting for us because two, we know the answer, the other two are waiting 2019 to get, will we succeed? Will we have drugs to use for these residual events? So this is new information. Yes, we also, uh, for our first time ever, we are facing a problem in Egypt. We are having a new drugs, medications introduced in the market almost every day. Yes. And we don't know the sources. Mm -hmm. They are what are called copies, because we have a brand name drug, yes. which is the original drug from the original company, which undergoes scrutiny by agencies like the FDA, like the EMEA in Europe, they have to undergo large studies to prove that they are safe, effective, and thousands of patients are tried, and then the drug is approved, and they give them a patency right almost 10 years. After the patency right goes away, then other companies are allowed to produce what's known as generic. Generic is a drug that has to prove it's bioequivalent to the original drug. But there are problems. Problems is that some countries, like the United Kingdom, they will just study the generic in 20 young volunteers, and they'll give them one dose of the generic and then say it's okay. But what about the elderly that you treat not for one day, you treat them for years and months? And what about the difference in bioequivalence? Because if it's 20% less, how do you know after several years what is it going to cost to the patient? Other thing, the inactive ingredients. Every generic is allowed to put different inactive ingredients. 
they are looking at the active ingredients. Inactive ingredients, some of them cause resistance in patients and they cause increased cost to treat that patient later on. Others cause, like, for example, lactose, they cause GIT uh, disturbance for those who cannot tolerate milk products and a lot of similarities. So genetic has to be really well studied. The problem in Egypt is not the generic, it's the copy. The copy, you don't have even any regulatory authority that will study this copy. Just a company will try to imitate the active ingredient. Nobody will study it. They will do no studies on any patients at all. They will just prove to the committee and the health ministry that it's, the drug is uh, active and it will go to the market. And they will even do it before the patency right is finished, which is not legal in countries like the United States or Europe. They cannot sell it or market it in the United States or Europe. Another worse thing is what we call fake drugs. Fake drugs, they are not drugs at all. They are fake. And this is 10% in the developed countries and 40% instance in underdeveloped countries, 40%. It's a fake drug. There's nothing there, it's no drug. So it's a really serious problem and the patient pays the price. The, we as doctors are trying to save money to the patient by writing a generic, for example. But we have to make sure that it's a respectable generic. What is a respectable generic? It's what's known as branded generic. It's the originator company, when the patency is finished, they produce a much cheaper generic exactly bioequivalent to the original brand name and they sell it at a much lower price this you are guaranteed that this is the same drug the same active and inactive ingredients and this is what you give to your patient but just unknown sources just any drug you could be harming rather than benefiting your patient so we were highlighting this to the physicians because we are always accused as doctors that we're just uh, increasing the cost to the patient. But the problem is efficacy and safety. Efficacy, it has to be proven. And you have to prove it for us so that we can use it safely, not just any drug. Okay, thanks a lot, Dr. Nassim. You're welcome. You're welcome.